In this video we have a circle and here is the center and a line segment that passes through the center and has the measure of 16 units and another line segment that is perpendicular to the first one and measures 10 units. We need to find the radius of this circle. In the first step we will extend this line segment to draw the diameter of this circle. So here we have the diameter and now we will connect these two points and then these two. Then what we have formed here is a triangle. Let's call this triangle A, B and C. In this triangle all the vertices are on the circle and one side is the diameter. Then in such a triangle this angle is always a right angle. To understand why this angle is a 90 degree angle let's review the definition of inscribed angles. An inscribed angle is an angle whose vertex is on the circle and the sides are chords. And here we have an example of an inscribed angle that measures 35 degrees and it has the vertex on the circle and the two sides are the two chords of this circle. The right angle that we have in our problem is also an inscribed angle because it has the vertex on the circle and the two sides are the two chords of this circle. Now we also need to know that an inscribed angle is one half of its intercepted arc. So here this is the intercepted arc and if this angle measures 35 degrees then the intercepted arc will measure 70 degrees. So you see the relation between the inscribed angle and the intercepted arc. The inscribed angle has to be half of the intercepted arc. In our problem the intercepted arc measures 180 degrees therefore the inscribed angle is half of 180 which is 90 degrees. So then we can say that the triangle ABC is a right triangle. Now this line segment that measures 10 units represents the height of this triangle. The height splits this triangle into two smaller triangles and these triangles are similar. To the right we have the definition of similar triangles so these are triangles that have the same shape but their sizes are different. When the shapes are the same then the corresponding angles have to be equal. For example if in the smaller triangle the angle formed by the shortest side and the hypotenuse is 60 degrees then in the bigger triangle the angle formed by the shortest side and the hypotenuse also has to be 60 degrees. Then each of these two angles will measure 30 degrees. Now I will show you through an example why in a right triangle if we draw a perpendicular down to the hypotenuse we get two similar triangles. So here we have a right triangle with the 90 degree angle. Then when we draw a perpendicular down to the hypotenuse we also form two right triangles each having a right angle. Now in this triangle let the measure of this angle be 60 degrees. Then in the triangle to the right this angle has to measure 30 degrees because these two angles together have to make 90 degrees. Now if in the triangle to the left one of the acute angles is 60 degrees then the other one has to be 30 degrees. And in the triangle to the right if one angle is 30 degrees then the other one has to be 60 degrees. Now we can say that because these two triangles have the same angles they have the same shape but their sizes are different and we call these triangles similar triangles. Now what else we need to know about similar triangles is that the corresponding sides are proportional. For example let's say that the lengths of the sides of this small triangle are 3, 4 and 5 and the sides of the bigger triangle are 6, 8 and 10. Here we can say that the shortest side of this triangle corresponds to the shortest side of this triangle, then the bottom side corresponds to the bottom side and the hypotenuse corresponds to the hypotenuse. Then if we form a ratio using the shortest sides of each of these triangles then the ratio will be 3, 
over 6. And if we use the bottom sides, then the ratio will be 4 over 8. And if we use the hypotenuse, the ratio will be 5 over 10. Then when the sides are proportional, these ratios will be equal. As you see, 3 over 6 is the same as 4 over 8 and is the same as 5 over 10. Now we will use this principle to solve the given problem. First, let's add another point here and we will call it point D. Then in the triangle to the left, this side that measures 10 units is the shortest side and this side that measures 16 units is the middle side. In the triangle to the right, this one is the shortest side and we can call it DC and the middle side is this one that measures 10 units. Then we can form the following proportion. The shortest side of the triangle to the right divided by the shortest side of the triangle to the left, that will be DC divided by 10 equals the middle side of the triangle to the right divided by the middle side of the triangle to the left. And this will be 10 divided by 16. To solve this proportion, we will use cross multiplying. Then we will have 16 multiplied by DC equals 10 times 10, which makes 100. Then if we divide both sides by 16, we will get that DC equals 100 over 16. If we write it as a decimal, then this is 6.25. So we just found DC and it is 6.25. If we take 16 and we add 6.25, we will find the diameter. So the diameter is 16 plus 6.25, which equals 22.25. Then the radius will be half of the diameter and this is 22. 0.25 divided by 2, then the radius will be 11.125 units. I hope you enjoyed this video. Please subscribe, leave a comment, and thank you for watching.